All right, welcome in. It's another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Joe Ranieri. I'm joined by Thomas Vecchio today of Number of Fire, and we're going to dive into the world of esports because, Thomas, correct me if I'm wrong here, it is, uh, it is an ever-growing community of folks, and there is an ever-growing community of people who are betting on esports right now. Yeah, we've had it for DFS, uh, you know, for the past few seasons. Uh, we just recently got it on FanDuel. It's becoming larger in uh, some of the Vegas books. And at this time when, you know, traditional sports are paused, we want to be looking to whatever action we can possibly get. So like in anything else in the DFS world, no matter what sport you're talking about, obviously there are going to be favorites. There are going to be underdogs. There's going to be value. You just got to figure out which way to go. Now, I know this weekend, of course, we've got a uh, League of Legends tournament going on. Talk to me here about some of the big favorites, right? Some of these teams that, uh, that we should know about that are like, the, let's say, the Yankees or the Dodgers, so to speak. Yes, yeah, so when it comes to League of Legends DFS, uh, you know, just take a little bit step back for, you know, most people this might not be normal, but you want to just treat this as a DFS sport. Learn it like baseball, learn it like hockey. You want to be focusing in and on stacking. You know, who are the teams we can stack up to really rack up the most fantasy points possible? And this week we want to start off with TSM Team Solo Mid. They are nine and seven for their regular season record. They are tied for second place. We are down to the final two games of the regular season. They are looking to Lock up the second seed, which is much, much better than the third seed. You get to pick your opponent when it comes to playoffs. Uh, they are playing 100 Thieves this weekend, who come in with the third most deaths in the North American LCS, uh, a team that doesn't play necessarily too disciplined at times. So Team Solomid are in a good spot to really rack up the you know, potential points. Now, when it comes to the positions, your mid laner and your ADC are kind of like your wide receiver one and running back. They're going to be putting up points on a game-by-game -game basis, but they have even more points when it comes to winning. Uh, the support jungler and the top laner, those players are like uh, maybe a tight end or a wide receiver too, where they have a wider range of outcomes. So for me on TSM, going to Bjergsen in the mid lane is a no doubt. Kabe at ADC. And then if you want to you know, implement a little more risk, going to Dardock at jungle or Biofrost at support really offer you upside in a spot where they should be able to win. And of course, you know, with these games going on, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but how many games are we talking about either a day or part of the week are we looking at the possibility to be able to, uh, to create these lineups? So there's five games on a slate. They play two games on every weekend. So five games on Saturday, five games on Sunday. All right. So we're talking about, of course, uh, is there anybody else, uh, you know, in that uh, favorite or higher price category that we should know about? So the best team in the league is a team called Cloud9. They are 15 and one. They have locked up the first seed for weeks at this point. They have nothing to play for. They're playing a team, Evil Geniuses, who are also nine and seven, just like TSM, vying for a playoff spot, fighting for the seeding. Uh, Cloud9 looked okay last week. They, Like I said, they don't have anything to play for. Uh, and I kind of like EG this week as a higher price team, hoping for some leverage. You know, if we have newer people coming into, you know, playing eSports DFS, we want to be looking for a spot where if Cloud9 is going to be over-owned just because they're 15-1 and one in the best team, I want to go for that leverage in tournaments. And it comes to a team like EG who are playing them. You can be looking to Jazuki in the mid lane for 9.2. Bang, their ADC is one of the most consistent players in the LCS, sitting at 9.6. And really, I think the wild card is going to be their support player, Zazel, at 7.6. So you get a little bit of savings with him. You're going up to the high price players that you want and hopefully the lower ownership in tournaments. All right, so let's talk here. Of course, you can't have the higher price stacks without having the value, the lower price stacks here. So talk to us here about some of the uh, more value-oriented stacks we should be looking at this weekend. So one of the cheaper stacks we're going to find tonight, or this week, I should say, for Saturday's LCS slate is Counter Logic Gaming. Now, if you look at the standings, they are dead last in the league. They are 13-3. and three. They're out of the playoffs. They are facing a team, Golden Guardians, who is 6-10. and 10. They're really not that much better than CLG. And if everyone's going to be off of CLG just because they're terrible or quote-unquote terrible, I think we can be looking to them for a bit of value. Now, Golden Guardians actually come in with the second most deaths in the entire league. CLG is at, you know, last in the league with the most deaths. But Golden Guardians, like, aren't significantly better just because they have three more wins than CLG. And the savings that Counter Watch Gaming bring tonight are really awesome. We have Stick, say, their most, uh, I would say their best player, the most expensive at $9,000. 
you really get some savings if you drop down to their support smoothie at 7.3 and really pole belt there in the mid lane at 8.4 is much, much cheaper compared to some of the other mids. So we get a bit of value. We get a team who, yeah, they play a little bit sloppy, but Golden Guardians are not that good. All right, so talk to me because I love the name. Talk to me about the Immortals here tonight and the value that they bring to the table. So Immortals back into the LCS this season after a few years off. They are 8-8. Eight and eight. They are vying for a playoff spot. We have all these teams, 9-7, and 8-8, eight and 6-10. Eight, and ten. They are all in the mix. Uh, I like this spot for Immortals this week, mainly because their prices are really, really cheap. They kind of remind me of... I don't know, like uh, just a middle of the road NFL team, uh, you know, sitting on like the outside looking in. They look good sometimes, they look bad sometimes. Maybe they're losing games they shouldn't be. They're winning close games that they shouldn't be winning. That kind of team. And if everyone's going to be paying up for, you know, Cloud9 or TSM, they're going to be dropping all the way down for a CLG. We have Immortals in the mid tier. Apollo came in mid season. He's 9.4, their most expensive player. But really, the savings that Hakuo, their support, brings at 6.8. It's Mithy in the jungle at 7.8, and Ike in the mid lane is only 8.5. So we have Immortals, really cheap options when it comes to the support. We have some, what should be lower ownership with Counter Logic Gaming, and then really that team I'm trusting this week is going to be TSM. So as you can hear with Thomas, obviously there are opportunities this weekend. Esports continues to power through, and of course, we've got you covered here at FanDuel.com. All the information you need, the lines, the lineups, all available to you at FanDuel.com. Tom. So, Thomas Vecchio of Number Fire, certainly appreciate your time and your knowledge when it comes to esports. And this has been another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up. Enjoy your weekend and be safe.